reject the agenda to draft the Constitution, as well as promulgate progressive laws to accompany the transitional justice program of the state of the new Gambia. Effectively, the National Assembly passed three key legislations that I need to um, as the bedrock of our constitutional and other legal reform processes. Notably, the National Human Rights Commission Act 2017, the Truth, Reconciliation and Reparation Commission Act 2017, and the Constitutional Reform Commission Act of 2017. Fortunately, the PRC and the NHRC respectively stood the test of time and work well in unearthing the past human rights violations and instituted a preventive mechanism for future human rights violations, the National Human Rights Commission. But unfortunately, chief of the reform process, that is the Constitution Promulgation Bill 2020, could not save through the National Assembly. Precisely, as we all know, going through the 1997 Constitution, a requirement of Section 226.2d of the Fifth Legislature of the National Assembly witnessed the tabling of the Constitution Promulgation Bill 2020. That is, in other words, the CRC draft constitution by the government in 2020. However, the bill stalled in the National Assembly at the second reading stage because it could not win the great support of all members of the National Assembly as required by Section 2262B of the 1997 Constitution. Uh, notwithstanding this setback, the government may decide to come back for even the private member's bill to revive the process of promulgating a new constitution for our republic that the CRC worked so hard and diligently to produce as the basis of ushering a new constitutional order, as rightly stated by the Secretary General and Party Leader. Thus, the role of the National Assembly in getting us a new constitution is still fundamentally relevant and very necessary. Now, on the principles of transitional justice, it is the field that has developed as a response to this dilemma. The aim of transitional justice is to confront legacies of abuse in a broad and holistic manner, encompassing criminal, restorative, social, and economic justices. It recognizes that responsible justice policy must include measures that seek to, end, to achieve both accountability for past crimes and the prevention of the new ones. It also recognizes that the demand for criminal justice is not absolute, but instead must be balanced with the need for peace, democracy, equitable development, and the rule of law. The widely held reality is that countries like the Gambia, recovering from periods of mass abuse, face the almost certain prospect of flawed justice. In a significant number of cases, transitional governments are effectively forced to choose between justice and the continuation of peace, or justice and the maintenance of democracy. Even where such threats are less prominent, the massive scale of past abuses, the weaknesses of our laws, the adoption of amnesty laws, and severe limitations in relation to human and financial resources often make ordinary justice impossible. Invention <coughs> and compromise become dual imperatives. This is where the government 
and the national assembly found itself in 2017. Thus, the national assembly had to enact the TRRC to set the ball rolling for an effective transitional justice system. Similarly, criminal legislations such as the criminal offenses and the criminal procedure bills were introduced to ensure a complete reform of our criminal legal system. I have been made to understand that these bills are at an advanced stage in the legislative process for enactment at the National Assembly. I stand to be corrected by honorable members who are present with us here. I am equally aware that the National Assembly has passed the Prevention and Prohibition of Torture Act 2023. This is a milestone achievement in our efforts to promote human rights and uphold the rule of law in the country. The Act provides a legal framework for the prohibition, prevention, and punishment of any form of torture and other forms of cruel, inhumane, or degrading treatment in the Gambia and provide penalties aimed at ensuring accountability for acts of torture. But let us also be very mindful of the remarks by the Secretary General with regard to the prevalence of torture at the moment. Finally, I understand that the National Assembly will be convening an extraordinary session this month to consider and pass two prominent legislations aimed at furthering the transitional justice mechanism. I think it has already been visited. And that is the enactment of a special office, one, and two, the enactment of the special accountability mechanism law, all related to the TRRC for justice and accountability. In conclusion, it is evident that these rules of parliament in our democratic state have highlighted the significance of parliament in our constitutional and legal reforms, as well as in our transitional justice process that we all fought for, especially the Prime Minister Sonu who has been the sacrificial lamb in this process. Parliament was there for not a end in its collective pursuit in furthering the transitional justice mechanism as per its legislative oversight and representative function. This is the social contract for which they were all elected. And I thank you all for your time.